Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Before it gets to the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, before we get started, uh, just to reorganize because it's going to be till one o'clock. So there are other two sessions happening, right? So I want to make sure that you are having the right expectation, and if you have something else, probably you can, you know, go and choose something else. So uh, I want to know how many of you are uh, beginners to that. Oh, a lot of people. Okay. Uh, new to Agile. And uh, how many people are uh, you know doing Agile for at least one year? Okay. More than five, uh, two, three years. Uh, we have a mix of all, right? Okay. So I'll I'll tell you what I have in my agenda, and if you have some questions, uh, ask me now. And if you think it's it's mismatching, then probably we can take some decision now, right? So I'm going to talk about product backlog. Uh, we will see what you should be putting in backlog, and how do you uh, how do you understand the backlog basically, and how do you prioritize? So uh, one of the problem which I have faced is even though you have the product owner defined in the backlog, many many of us are not really bought into it. Why this is in the first place? I mean, there are multiple items. We think that this is maybe you know adding more value to the customer than this, and but product owner is not really telling us. So how do we do that? Uh, and also, we will do an activity uh, to do three things. One is, I'll show you what is a user story mapping us, uh, which is very basic. You know, uh, As part of our activity, I can actually show you activity which is different for a different intention. And I'll also show you how do we do a value-based prioritization. Yesterday, there was some discussion which I was part of. So uh, people were asking about how do you do value-based prioritization, right? And also, we will touch upon MVP, minimum viable product. And uh, whatever we are doing, not only about ID, it can be applied in your personal life also. Yeah. So we will we'll touch upon that as well. So any any discrepancy, any other expectations you have? So we have a, a log on log two feet. Any time if you feel that I am talking some rubbish and you don't like it, please walk out. I don't get offended because there are many other things happening and it is. Probably better than what we are talking here. I don't know, right? You choose wisely. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Actually, I want something. Uh, I am using uh, Agile and these these processes from last one year. But we are not. Ex we are actually struggling with the user stories and the the how how can we define the these backlogs. So I want this thing more practical. And if you will take uh, some example. Yeah, we will we will look at user stories. Yes, we will look at user. Anything else? Good to go? Great, okay. So about me, I'm an Agile coach in JDA. Designation is Agile coach, but uh, I'm still learning Agile. I think I can't learn Agile probably in my lifetime because it's, it's evolving, right? It's a lot, lot of things. But what is fascinating me is Agile is the nature of our life. That's what I believe in. And that's why I chose this profession. I moved out of product management. I was, I worked as a developer. I was just a scrum master product owner, and then I moved to an Agile coach. And last five years, I'm uh, coaching different companies. I work with uh, Nokia Siemens Networks, uh, GE, Alcatel Lucent, Walket, Society General, and now I'm with JDA. Yeah, and feel free to connect with me uh, in LinkedIn. So many times, we are not sure what we need to build. For example, like Nidin was talking about the way technology was evolving, right? And we are all fascinated. Yeah, the data is really showing us, it's staring at us. We have to move, we have to do something very, very different. Otherwise, you know, it's like Big Basket came and took over the market, or it's like Ola and Uber took over your uh, taxi market. Things are going to change, right? So, yeah, we have a lot of ideas, but how do we know where to start? What to start with? And even in, in the year current world, if you look at, many people doesn't know, yeah, you have a lot of big wish lists, but which one to start with? You have many customers, probably. You know, there, are, there are cases where you have only one customer, probably you can talk to them and figure out. There are cases where you have a lot of customers, and each one has their own idea about what they want. Right? You struggle with that. So creating product backlog has been one of the main constraints. And even uh, when we talk about product backlog, we can also think about the people who don't really start doing agile. We can think about your requirement, document, or whatever. You should be having a document anyway, right? So we change the document name to product backlog in Agile, but the document still exists. And one more change what happened was with Agile, we 
change the way you write your requirement. How many of you recognize that? How do you write your requirement now? Give us a story, right? How is it different? We take from the end user point of view. What the end user wants, we put that and we say this is what you want to achieve. You write that, right? Okay. So you started writing in a way that it is going to tell you who wants it, why he wants it, what he is going to do with it, right? But why we started with such a movement? I mean, is it really helping you? How many of you think that user stories have changed our way of working? It is helping because requirements are not really uh, requirements. They are more technical at the end of their thing. And it does not have any significant meaning to what the market at the end user, what he is trying to see. Let's yeah. say, for example, mobile app, you talk about something, technical requirements, it's lost as to what the end user needs to be able to Yes. And user stories these days connect the business with the technical aspect. That's important. Okay. Previously, it used to be we have to add three buttons and all that. Now we say that as a salesperson, I would like to, you know, so that helps mm. the technical people know what they're actually adding to the business, mm -hmm. the value add. Good point. So having the context, it actually uh, gives you an idea of how should you design, how much performance you should be targeting for, what kind of qualities there should be, uh, all those kind of uh, things. Okay. Uh, you get non-functional non requirements, you can actually think of it the context. And who gives you the user stories? Yeah. I want to add to this question about why the last part of the user story is why. That actually forces the question why do you really need it? Mm -hmm. Is it just a wins and fancies of the manager or the product owner that feel good factor? Or is there a associated business value with that requirement or not? So that last section, portion of the campaign really forces the entire Agile organization to question the sanctity of that requirement before yeah. they commit it to the team. Yeah, good point. Who gives the user stories? Who writes the user stories? So we are using the communication technique as well. Okay. We think with domain and for problem and solution gaps and all. Yeah. We try to use common terminology, we try to bridge and understand the reality. We are trying to impact something. So we are coming to that, it's a very good point. So if you look at the way we want to use backlog, or rather when we, we talk about the complete, the whole stakeholders, we need to look for probably two different things. One is about a shared understanding, and another one is a common vision. So shared understanding about what is there, what is there in the backlog, and why it is there. And the vision is about where are we heading to, right? Unless the team, Probably the product management is very well aware about what it is and how it's going to be. And so that's why it's in the priority order. But unless the team really understands, many times you may get a question back to the product owner, maybe at the demo time, normally it's pretty late, and they ask the question like, say, why do we build this? Because probably there is another, there's another feature in the backlog which is, which is, which is more valuable than this, or it's kind of, uh, if you have, if you build this first, it's going to add more value to the customer. Right? So, many ca cases, the team is not really involved in this prioritization because we leave it to the product, product owner. You follow me? So, normally we think it's a business of product owner to prioritize. Right? Okay. So, we will we'll come back to that in a minute. So, yep. Enrolled into it, so that's where you have a you know kind of resistance, which is 
starting and then you will see that they are not really with you to kind of deliver this because they don't really understand why the product owner is talking about it. The idea is you should make them really understand why the product owner is asking for it. He has some reasons, right, as you mentioned. So we have to make it very explicit to the team also because they are the one who is creating value for you, right? So what happened was when we started moving to user story business, everybody started writing stories, right? So the requirement, earlier you have plain document, uh, plain English document talking about requirement, now Ken Beck came with an idea of user stories. So everybody, all agile coaches, everywhere you go, they will say, you have to write a user story and there's a format. Uh, so uh, as a customer, I want that so that I can accomplish something, right? So you have this format and everybody started writing stories. But nobody really understood why Ken Beck came with an idea of stories. The way we, human beings, explain things to people, like say for example, if I went for a vacation, or my journey yesterday to Delhi, there are a lot of things happen in between, right? If, say, he's my friend, he asked me, how, how was your travel? Or uh, say, Abdul was kind of working with me to get my logistic done, so he asked me, how, how was your travel? I said, it's okay. What, what, what does he understand from that? Nothing. So if I want him to understand more about it, what will I do? I'll tell, I'll tell a story about it. Oh, yesterday, you know, my daughter was not sleeping the day before. I slept at 12 o'clock, it happened. This is my story. And I woke up, 2, 2, 2.48, my cab driver called me, 2.48 a.m. Then I, I woke up, because my alarm was at 3 o'clock, but anyway, I woke up, so I got uh, ready and then got into the cab at 3.30, Bangalore, uh, you know, the, the um, airport is pretty far. And I didn't really like the driver, so I was awake. I didn't want to sleep in the car, so I was awake. Because even this day, I sleep, right? So I was awake and engaging him with some questions, some stupid questions. And I wish I report, and then a lot of funny things happened. So if I start telling the story, you will get a better picture about what I'm talking about. The idea of introducing user story was exactly that. If you write down stories, people are going to read it. Each one who want to read it will get a different idea. This is exactly what happened. We say that, we all agree, because we have a shared document now. Right? So what we need to do is, instead of writing stories, you should start telling stories. That is the idea of user stories. User story is not about you write in a different format and then you know again share it with everybody. The idea of user stories is the invention of user story happened because we want to create a shared understanding by telling stories. It's nobody is worried about the format. You change the format, it's okay. As long as everybody in the team, all the stakeholders really understand what it really means. Yeah. When we talk about shared understanding, that's again coming up there in the discussion, but we can also talk, it, it, see, shared understanding about why customer wants something is different than, you know, why this first, right? That is little different. So we will see that. So what we need is, we have to probably don't get obsessed by, by this format, or there is another format existing which is called given when then. I don't know how many of you use it. If you use BDD, you probably write given when then format. Or you write user stories and scenarios in even when that format so that it can be automated and a lot of funny things, right? Thing is, if somebody is telling you you are not agile by uh, because you are not writing stories in this format and if you people, all your team members having a common understanding, I don't think anybody can come and invalidate you that you are not doing agile. Agile is about common sense. So don't get worried about people who talk about this kind of formatting, right? So worry more about creating a shared understanding. Yeah? Okay. This is what happens when you tell stories. You make things explicit. What did you understand from this? You start asking. You get people, whoever is required. Whoever is required. So if you talk about the life cycle, the product owner may talk to the customer, or the customer is part of you, you don't want to go to the team up front and start talking about the story from inception. Rather, you probably get some people who really understand this, understand the product. We call lead team, maybe. I don't know how many of you have it. Then you do a product discovery. You have the conversation, you shape it up. Then involve the team. Get their ideas. They are going to talk about some technical limitation. They are going to ask about the performance limit. They are going to give you a lot of ideas. So you work around that and create a common understanding about how it is going to be. That, yes? I promise you that all the people are creating the story. You can find out Delphi. Delphi? Delphi technique. Delphi technique. Everybody is writing. No, 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 no. It's not about everybody from the day one. That's, it's not, 
it's going to be ineffective if you start everybody involving in day one. It's kind of, you know, whoever is involved, you pick and choose. The product owner will have a better idea about who can give me more ideas. When it's shaping up or when it's kind of almost, yeah, these guys have contributed and it's in shape, so probably you can involve the team. So you have to choose wisely with respect to your context, who can contribute to it. Finally, before you start any development or before you do estimation, the team should have an idea about what it is. You build a shared understanding. So shared documents are not shared understanding. You follow me till here? Agree? Any questions? Who, who, are, who, who, who should be writing the single story in the initial stage before handing it over to the team? Okay, that's a one fantastic question. That's why I asked you who writes user stories for you. Uh, everybody have a notion that it's the responsibility of product owner who writes the user story and he takes the responsibility and if anything wrong here, you make him accountable. Product owner comes with the user story, probably he initiates that, but it's the whole team responsibility to make it complete. The story has to be evolving, it should be developed by the team, the whole team. But the product backlog is owned by the product owner. Development team, product owner, product manager, wherever, who, the stakeholder, all the stakeholder will be contributing to that's why we say we have complete transparency. But when you, if you are looking for a responsible person, the product owner is owning the backlog. He is the single owner of the backlog. He might be giving and presenting as a business case. This is what I want. Yeah. He might be not technical about it. No, you, you don't need to be technical. So that's where you want to have more detail, right? That's next one. So. This, your story should work like a vacation. By the way, it's me and my wife and my, my daughter. So your story, your acceptance criteria should work like a vacation photo. If you see this photo, what you will understand? You see that I'm standing there, my daughter is not very happy, my wife is smiling because camera is on anywhere, <laughs> right? But you have no idea about what exactly behind that. I know how, which is this place, how did we go there, what we have done there, what is what was the timing and how good the weather was, right? I have to talk about it. But all of us, my, my daughter probably, she can't perceive so much, but if you ask my wife, she and me have almost similar story. Because we were through that. So when you create acceptance criteria, acceptance criteria is something which you can actually take back to your story, connect back to your story. It can be anything. It can be a video of your conversation. It can be an audio. It can be a photograph of your, uh, you know, board design what you have done, why you are doing discussion. So it's not, need not be like, you know, you have to write in a specific format to identify that it's a acceptance criteria. It can be anything which is connecting back to the story and once the people are involved, the people who are involved are could connect to the story. That's when we say that, you know, you have a product backlog ready with proper acceptance criteria. Idea here is create a backlog with shared understanding. Sir, sometimes we have restrictions to write small stories. Like yeah. if not, it should not be more than seven hours or thirteen hours. It should be like a Noki <laughs> series. Yeah. So uh, we we are facing kind of problems. So how Breaking can, down how can we resolve that problems? Breaking down stories is a problem. Actually, a problem uh, if we will write free, freely story, then it might be increase the timings. So right. rule says that you should write the stories into the Noki series. One, three, seven, kind of. Thing. Yeah. So, so how, how can we how can we define the length of the story? See, I, I can't define a length of story. For example, in my organization, what we do is we say that the maximum size of the story is going to be eight story points. But that may not have any relevance to you because their story point is going to be a different reference. The idea is if I am doing a two I two weeks iteration, if I have a story which is going to go beyond one week, it's more or less going to overflow, or which is going to take the whole iteration, or they will done the develop, do the development only by the you know, day before the demo day and then testers don't have time. So if you have testers, depending on your criteria, you have to, your context, you have to define how it's going to be. And another point is why that writing the story, it, it is not feasible to say I only write three point worth of story. Yes. The size comes later on. Yeah, yes. yeah, so I think uh, the idea is first to start with maybe a broader story, maybe a epic, epic? Maybe a feature. Yeah. And then when you start uh, doing the acceptance criteria or the requirement, then then where you realize that you know I can break it into multiple stories or you know, and then comes the estimation. Yeah. So you know you should not think about the estimation at very first thing. So that's actually uh, next level when you do backlog grooming, where you talk about the size and then we I'm not touching upon that now, but we can probably have a discussion offline about it, right? 
So uh, in a book perspective, we can probably look for a user story mapping. It's a fantastic book where you can understand how you, even whatever I explained about share understanding, also mentioned there, Jeff Patton talking about what exactly did he work with Ken Beck also, right? And personal Kanban is something which will tell you how you can apply this in your personal life. Right? Nobody heard about him? Jim Benson, he was here in Bangalore last year for uh, Lean India Summit. Okay, so we will move on. We have to, we, our main topic is prioritization because we have, uh, you know, when we talk about backlog, we need to have the story a little bit introduced, right? So prioritization, how often do you, yeah? Think of possibilities. 
where of whatever is known to you consider that there may be something which is out of your circle of influence right there are, you know it's like raining I, I thought of you know going back to airport via metro but it's raining you know, what can i do nothing better call uber or uh, metro right so there are something which is outside our circle of influence but there are a lot of things which is within our circle of influence so if we, if we are aware about that probably you can take better decisions it's not that you would take perfect decisions you can take better decisions right and our priorities look like this because if you go back and ask your product owner they say everything is critical essential needed must have and if you ask them to order in a priority wise 1 2 3 they'll put one for everything yes sir. right everything like i yeah so what we, what will we do so which one we should deliver first no no all of this is needed <laughs> right so you need to have some mechanism in which you understand why he is talking about that and which one to start so we need to have some pointers around it so there there is a concept called mosco how many of you know about mosco must have should have could have what is w would have would have would have have or would have won't have so you either you can do you know must have you categorize things saying that this is a must for it but if you give this to product owner he will say must for everything you know, i don't know about your product owner but i have product owner he say everything is needed right so it's as good as not doing any prioritization because he say everything is needed there is another way this is from stephen bobby's uh, seven habits of highly effective people we talk about the quadrants right this is about important and not important urgent and not urgent so where do you want to get into important important this what not urgent not important not urgent not has nothing to do <laughs> where do you where do you aim to get into which important which one important not urgent for and what important non yeah probably you are here already that you are firefighting all the time we should be getting aiming to get into quarter number 2 where we will be being proactive so that's why we are talking about a story discussion trying to understand why because when we go for demo if the customer should not know why was not expecting this here the other way around we should have proactive discussions about because it is not urgent now because the demo time if you made a mistake then it's like who oh, we need it we were expecting it we want to show the customer so you may fix it immediately right we get into firefighting mode most of the, most of us are working in that way right the aim is to get back to quarter number 2 so that you foresee things like say for example today i want to go to airport right i my flight is at i think 5:20 i need to book here i have not, not done it i'm going to be in quarter number 1 now fighting for it i start looking at meru meru say no i all booking and then then getting nervous a little bit then go to another cab fellow and he said no finally i may you know get in touch with uh, uh, holiday in with people and then probably they may drop me and i'll get nervous because they want to charge me double right so be try to be in quarter number 2 always that's the idea and pareto principle i think yesterday in the, in the last discussion somebody was talking about pareto principle everybody is familiar with this yes. right So the key is to understand what is this 20%, which is contributing 80% of the use case. The key is to prioritize such a way that we are making this 20 so that our customer is going to happy. The the role of a product owner is to create maximum outcome with less output. The role of a pro, any product owner, or even if we talk about the team in a wide perspective, the idea is to create maximum outcome with less output. What is outcome? impact yes any other words you want to talk about business value customer value customer value customer value customer satisfaction right Your customer value is lead to customer satisfaction right customer value is also lead to customer satisfaction so we want to see more smile in customer face with lesser things so what you look at is how can i make the customer smile with lesser and lesser items yeah so if, for example let's say if i when i when i go my my daughter is 2 years she started eating lot of chocolate so if i go and give her uh, you know funny looking cardberry silk or a small chocolate for her both are chocolates i see the same same smile so i better give a small one and then probably save my pocket right so it's as simple as that we do that i don't know how many of you does that whenever you know you purchase things for people or you know i don't know how many of you guys will do shopping for wife 
and I, I, <laughs> I don't want to get into that. Yesterday I went, by, by the way, I went to Sarojini Market and bought a lot of uh, dress for my daughter, but uh, I didn't get anything for my wife, so yeah, you will imagine how it's going to be when I reach there. The next one is about Canna model. Familiar with Canna model? Yeah, so there are some basic threshold features which is necessary for that particular product and there are some excitement features. So you have to look at the basic threshold one and if you build more of it, it becomes an over engineering, it's not going to add any value, right? So you have to look at a balance between these two, right? Okay, so keep this in mind and be even, one more is impact mapping which is adding directly back to the value. So you, if you can, you map it, what is the impact and what is the you know cost is going to be or how easy it is going to implement, the risk factor. Right? So we will do an exercise now to understand how we are going to do it. So everybody have two post, two set of post-its and sketch pens. Everyone, every table. Okay. What we are going to do is even you can uh, use this at home also on different purpose. So each one of uh, each each table. Okay. We will work as a group because we don't have much time. So you have to come out with a list of item, a list of tasks which you have done today morning. From Snoozing your alarm till when you get out of home. People who stayed in the hotel probably can contribute to it. In a normal day, how what do you do? Right? In a normal day, how do what what are the different tasks, activities you do before you getting out for work? So one task and one paper. One task, one paper. No. Each task, one paper, don't say that getting ready and going to office. No, that's kind of an epic. Don't do that. It creates more small tasks. You discuss and write down because we can't work individually. You discuss and write down and then create a list of items in an order. You know, snoozing the alarm, snoozing second time, snoozing third time, okay, waking up, you know, stuff like that. So you create a small, yeah, you put your task down there and then create that master. So color is, is there any relevance to color? Any relevance to color? I think you, if you use a single color, it's going to be better. We can use a single one. So use a single one, single, single positive. Yeah, yeah, you can discuss. Do it, do it faster. Everybody in the rushing will do every day. Waking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, I want task. Common life when you get up in the morning. Meaning, rushing is one task. Waking up is one task. You know. Ten more minutes. Ke baad toh mobile on. Disconnect nahi lag raha. Let us wake up. Okay. Wake up. We wake up. Start mobile on. Pehle. Half two minutes to pehle. I am sitting for five minutes. Work not done. Right? I don't know how people have interpreted that, but the idea is that you started saying no, more no. The product owner's job is to say no. Because he needs to choose wisely what need to be built there. Right? So this is how you create a story map for your product. Right? I just wanted to introduce story map. Our game is different. So now what we are going to do is you can uh, probably worry, don't worry about the uh, top item. You want to, or I want you to order this in terms of priority. What is important for you, right? You have to say that which is important. You put all the important items in. in we will, first we put in an order of, like say the order of in which we do it, right? Now you put in in an order in which you can go to if it's a priority is going to be. In the same group, you have to. No, no. It's don't worry about the group now. I just wanted to introduce story mapping for you. That's why we did the grouping. Now we talk about the priority. You group them into four different cases. That is X, L, sorry, uh, small, medium, L, and XL. Yeah. You create four different ones. So you can take that top one and then create that, write down S, priority. M, L, and XL. Yeah? Priority, priority. So what is the biggest priority for you? That is XL. Clear? You create four categories and then accordingly you are just. <laughs> Yeah, you can do both. Why not? Okay. I, we will get into that. Don't worry. So, yeah. You got to put it in the priority. Rushing. Probably no, the highest priority. You want to do that. Right? So likewise, couple of things. You can skip breakfast or something else. Right? You clear about that? Yeah? Four, four different categories. Four categories. Picking up. 
Understand why it's important and then we'll, you know, probably something will evolve. And then choose the better one. Normally give, you know, who is more, you know, pulling, probably they will get more chance. But what happens is, the idea is to kind of have the discussion and understand why they're doing it. And then later probably we'll give the benefit of doubt to on the other side, like say, a pessimistic approach. Sir, sometimes so we ask this thing to clients, like, he, he has their own priorities. Yeah. So sometimes we ask to client, like, please define your priorities, because client is everything for us. Correct. So this is what we are doing with the client. So guys, you now, if it is L, you mark L on the right side of this mark, uh, faucet for each one. Excel, Excel. Yeah. Excel for this. Still the priority only, right? Still the priority. It's a priority, right? Yeah. All of these are Excel. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Ready? Done? Oh, wow, super. Yeah, 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 that's what you're done. But what is that? I thought something Done? All of you done? Okay, now what we are going to do is, you keep the title, L, Excel there, and you're going to move your faucet according to the effort. Brushing may have lesser effort, right? So you move back to S. Likewise, you are going to reorder the complete thing in order of effort. Yeah? One, two, four, eight. So now what I want is, I want a number, a fraction which is going to come out value by cost. That is your first one, priority divided by one, two, four, eight. Two, low. 4 by 8, so 2, two. Okay. So, so this is 4, this is half, then again, uh, So just write down the we have to write down the total, right? No, 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 no. no. It divided by the number. Priority is this or this? This is uh, effort. This is effort. Priority. So four. Four. Because what what is the 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 Okay, so you follow as of now? Okay, so there are some other games also possible to play to identify value. So now you go to the product owner, you say, well, it's very difficult to identify value, you can talk about it, everything is of higher value, I don't know. So when your product owner start acting funny, you have you can do something else, right? So what you do is you play an innovation game. So it's it's just a point that you you can probably read more about it later. One is buy a feature. Anybody heard about it? Yes. Yeah. So what you do is, you say a limited amount of money you have, like say you have 100 rupees or you have 1000 rupees, like say it's it's as good as you are going with your wife to a shopping mall and say that I have only 1000 rupees, you do whatever you want, yes. right? So she has to prioritize, 
So you have to find which one has more value. So we give this probably this uh, you know fake currency to the customer and say that these are the values, uh, these are the features. You put money accordingly. Whatever you think is going to make money. If your customer gives the same put the same currency everywhere, yeah. there may be problems. So don't give the same currency to the customer. Yeah, right? So there is a reason. And even you can play this with multiple customers. We do that. When you have multiple customers, you get everybody, some representative, and we get the list of features and give to everybody and say, give the fake currencies and ask them to put it. Or you know, you can give an Excel printout and ask them to write, assume that you have 10 million and then you know distribute the money. They distribute money to the place where which is more important for them. You will get value. You getting me? Yeah. Okay. Another game which you can play is 2020 vision. It's again uh, uh, innovation game. So if you look look to the web or you can buy the book, innovation game. What it, it means is, you ask the customer, you write down the, each feature in a story card, and then you know you show the customer, what do you think about this? What is the value? They may say, oh, it's very important. They may not even give, give you a number. Then take the next one and ask him, what do you think with respect to this? Oh, this is more important. Put it on top of it. So you start cre visually creating a map, and then you know you are indirectly creating a value, value stage. Yeah? Previous slide. This one. So you have a limited amount of cash with you. You are asking the customer to distribute that cash among the features you have. Wherever they put more money is the highest value for them. Then you can come back and play this game. And then you identify the, the value versus cost. And you can tell back, you can talk to them and say that, you know, if you want this, it's going to cost this much. If you want this, it costs this much. And this cost is less and value is high. It makes sense to do this. And there's a wonderful video by Henrik Nieberg. How many of you have seen that? Uh, product ownership in a nutshell. Oh, I would have shown that. It's a fantastic video. In 10 minutes, you will get a complete picture about what product ownership is all about. Product ownership in a nutshell by Henrik Nieber. Yeah? So, super, super, right? Yeah, excellent one. I thought you, I would have asked a question. Yeah, we can, we can see that after, after the program, we can, we can probably play it. You have a connector to audio? You have an audio connector, right? Is the laptop? Okay, we'll come to that after, after once you complete this. The next one is this, where you start showing them and make the customer think. We are visually making them think. The problem is, most of the time, it happens to us, right? We get approaches and you have a lot of things to do. You have to probably take your daughter for vaccination if you have small kids, or you have to take your wife for shopping, you have to buy groceries, you have to get your something done for your car, a lot of things. And everything is running in your mind. And the end of Saturday evening, you think oh, I have not done anything, or you know I have not accomplished. You don't, you get, don't get a sense of you know accomplishment. That's where that book which I referred earlier, personal Kanban, playing playing a game, which is exactly the same, where you make things visual for you. Whatever comes in your mind, you create a board of it and then you start prioritizing, right? And last one is product box. Product box is more about if you go to you know go and watch any product or you know, go to a shop and then look at a product, there will be a funny box, right? Which is describing in a nutshell about what it is. So what you do is, you get the customers and then give them a box and say that, you, what do you think about this? Do you, do you want to design this? So, or your product owner can actually design the, you know, the uh, product box by writing down, okay, we are going to have this feature. That means that have more important. So you can probably play the game, depending on which game you want to have with respect to your context. So all the games are not suitable for all the context, so you choose wisely and read more about this, right? And there's another one called uh, Bank of the Buck. It's, it's kind of similar what, what the exercise what we have done, right? So here we talk about value, here we talk about the cost. And you, you have this on your board and you paste probably the post it on the board depending on your value and cost. And what, does is, what happens is customers will always move things up and down. They play with up and down and team will play with this direction. After some time, you will see that it is evolving with uh, you know, meaningful priority. Fine? Make sense? Any questions, anybody? No? OK, cool. Minimum viable product. OK, so now what happens is, now you have your priority defined, right? So now, how many, roughly how many hours you will take to get ready? Uh, what, are, what are the exercises you are doing, right? This one. What is your 
end to end, cycle time, lead time. Who attended that lean management training yesterday? Yeah, lead time. What is going to be your cycle time roughly? One hour, two hour? One hour? Okay. So, one hour is roughly what you're going to take to get ready and do all this stuff in the morning, in a normal day. Now, what happened was, your alarm did not turn off. And you, when you woke up, you're seeing that you have only 15 minutes left. What do you want to do? And you, anyway, you want to get out by that time. So, what are the items you're going to do? You actually separate it out. <laughs> probably you don't want to do a lot of grooming rather, but you want to brush and you do. Thanks. So you can probably, uh, it's a good read, you can do that. Its name is Managing the Development of Large Software Systems by W. Uh, Vincent W. Royce. I have two copies if you want. Okay, now we are done. So uh, tell me, questions? Uh, we will connect that. Once, once any questions will take and then the rest of the people can go for lunch, right? If you are not interested. Any questions? No questions? Does it mean that everybody understood everything or uh, no, he went through crap one and a half hours? Huh? Okay, hold on a minute. So that's what I want. I want at least one takeaway from each table to make sure that I achieved my purpose. I traveled all this while, right? I want to know whether you learned something, something. So probably you can call out the one which you learned. You can probably discuss for one minute and then tell me what you've learned. More, many things, more the merrier, but at least one item. Don't disappoint me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>